In this week's Signal a Minute, the new Team PR got merged, improved CSV localization, free software, the creator spotlight, and our game of the week and tip of the week. Welcome to Signal a Minute, your weekly news series for Godot related news. I'm Voilin, and people are slightly upset. Today the PR for the Godot team, based on the Passive Star team, got merged for the upcoming 4.6 release. Think of it like a fresh coat of paint on the engine UI, but with a few tweaks. So there is a new font, the Inter font, and the blue base of the editor is basically becoming a more neutral grey, and some other tweaks on, well, well basically, of how the editor looks. However, don't worry, like yes, this new team will become the default team in 4.6, but the old team will continue to stay available through the settings. The old team will just not be the default team anymore. This is part of the upcoming 4.6 release, so in the next dev release you will be able to test out this team to see if there are any issues with it or if you like it or not. However, this change doesn't come with some people being upset, which is often the case when something changes that people are used to. Some people find that the default Godot team should not be changed during the 4.x releases and that it should, should better be implemented for the 5.x releases. And other people find that the contrast, the layout spacing and the readability aren't really great or not 100% polished enough yet. There are also some people that think that users will be confused when switching over to 4.6 and yeah that might be the case um, we'll have to see how that goes for the ui and the ux parts of godot there has actually been an open proposal already with some very nice ui and ux suggestions on how to make the editor look better and how to make it feel better to use the mockups of the proposed changes have a more rounded approach but also aim at creating a better usage experience altogether by minimizing the amount of stuff and buttons and such on screen. However, this is still just a proposal. There has not really been any work done towards this proposal, but maybe this is something we could see in a possible Godot version 5 UI update before version 5 gets released. Who knows? I do prefer the blue base color for the Godot team, but you cannot really like disagree with the fact that for color accurate work, having a tinted editor it's not really a good thing. So yeah, for more color accurate work, having a base color which is just in a grayscale is, well, noticeably better. But this, of course, is a personal choice. So yeah, let us know in the comments below, what do you think of this new team update? And then a quick reminder, if you want to stay up to date with what's happening in Godot land, be certain to subscribe if you haven't already, since this is a weekly news show in which I talk about Godot related stuff and game dev related stuff. Well, anyway, with that quick plug out of the way, let's go over to the Creator Spotlight. And for this Creator Spotlight, I actually have a very nice channel. Glitch Code is a relatively small YouTube channel, but with a consistent upload schedule. I promise you that you won't be able to go through his backlog of videos without finding at least a handful of videos about something Godot related that you really want to learn about or like know how to do. This channel really is a diamond in the rough. So go to the description, open his YouTube channel in a separate tab so you can start binge watching his videos once this Signal Admitted episode is over. I really do think that the channel Glitch Code really deserves a lot more subscribers and if you know of any other channels which you think should get a shout out, maybe they're also kind of like a diamond in the rough, let us know in the comments below or if you have a channel yourself that you want to be shouted out, go to the link in the description. And then the first of the other topics for this week is a small topic. But something worth mentioning as I find localization support quite important and accessibility in general should be a concern, like something that you take in mind when developing a game or a project. Thanks to Timothy for the PR to improve localization support when using CSV files. Because starting from 4.6, we'll be able to add context to localization um, strings and plural support for strings. So a very big thanks for making this PR. Localization support is important add localization support to your game or project or software. And then next up, this might not be the biggest news or the shiniest news, but Affinity is now free. Affinity can be compared to like some kind of like Photoshop or like vector editing software. And Affinity used to be a pay for a license to be able to use the software. So no like subscription base, but a one time fee. But since yesterday, October 30th, they are free with the only catch being that the AI stuff is behind the paywall 
This is for most people probably not too big of a deal. I found this worth mentioning since it's a creative tool that people could choose for making the artwork for their games or for making promotional materials for their games. So they're not longer bound to Photoshop if they use Photoshop by example. There is however no official support for Linux with no plans for creating support in the future. This is the downside. But oh well. And then for game of the week I present to you a game that got released very recently. Fading Serenade. This game was made by a developer called Bernie Wick. Fading Serenades is a pixel art adventure game in which you strap on your backpack, you hike, jump, climb through charming minigames to traverse a rugged landscape and help the old islanders with their deliveries, all while managing a backpack that's always a little too small. If you like minigames and the cozy pixel art style that you're seeing right now, then you should really try out the demo to see if this game is something you are interested in and possibly want to buy. If you have a game that you're working on that's near release or just released, let me know in the comments below so it can get a shout out in Signal and Minutes. And, well, the future episodes. And it's already time for tip of the week again. The part of each Signal and Minutes episode in which I share some helpful tips to improve your experience of working with Godot. Did you know that since the recent 4.5 release, you can easily preview your translations for your game or software without having to run the project straight from the editor. So what you need to do is just click on view and preview translations and then select any of the languages you have for your project. By the way, the project that you're seeing on screen right now is Kozen, my video editor which I'm making with Godot. A small little plug there. <laughs> and talking about plugs, I have another plug for you, our Discord server. If you want to discuss each episode more into detail or you want to be part of a Godot developer community, feel free to join. The admission fee for joining the Discord server is around $100 and there's a permanent 100% discount. Do the math. <laughs> and, and that's it for this episode. A big thank you as usual to all my Kofi supporters. They make Signal Emitted, my other videos and Gozen possible. And then there's nothing left for me to say except for Signal Emitted is a weekly episode, a weekly news episode. So if you want to stay up to date with Godot related news, subscribe and I'll see you all in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.